<clears throat> Greetings to um, brother and sisters. It is a great honor for us and privilege for us to go and attend uh, the Women and Men's Conference yesterday at um, St. Petersburg Church. And uh, the Lord has kept us safely, and the Lord has uh, allowed us to, uh, a lot of people, to speak to their hearts and to offer their lives to the Lord uh, to, to use. And praise the Lord that the Lord has begun his people and may the Lord continue to pour his blessings upon our lives praise the Lord that though we are um, people that sin against God there's a one light that's not turned off and so it's very the front light yeah I don't know make sure all three are on just open the door and then make sure all three are on The Lord loves us, and He has given His body as an, a sacrifice for us. And now we have been redeemed by His blood, and we are His children. In the past um, weeks, we have studied the Word of God in Isaiah, and we know that renewal comes from God, and revival also comes from God. And God has all authority to do all that because He is the Almighty God and Sovereign. And this morning, we were together study the sovereignty of God. We see that is God enough to answer all the problems in the world now? A lot of people, they know about God when they're young, but when they grow older, they leave God. They, not because they enter into a life that is um, sinful or anything. They continue to live a good life, a good citizen. They are a faithful husband or wife. Uh, good parents, but they do not need God uh, to answer their problems in their, in their lives. They believe that God is what stands in the place of um, uh, advancement of mankind. And they are so success successful in many aspects of life, but their understanding of God is still immature, and so they turn and rebel against God. Is your God big enough? Your faith in God must be big enough to encompass all aspects of life. It must encompass all the worries and harm and uh, wars that comes in our lives. God does not want you to have a, a uncertain answer to things that happen in your life. He wants to lift us up, raise us up, to have a, a firm faith in Him. For He is one and only true God. And He is the one that is in control of all things, all the happenings and events in this life, according to His sovereignty. In the passages that we have looked at, God promised that He will rescue His people, the Israelites. He promised to take them back to their land, the land of their fathers, to reestablish their nation. But more than that, God wanted to reveal His glory throughout the whole world. And the question that we placed is, how? How will God accomplish that? The job of the prophet Isaiah is to encourage, uh, edify their faith, the faith of the Israelites, that God is the one who will rescue them. Looking back in history, we see that the prophets, the prophecies have been fulfilled amazingly through the deportation, through the fall of Babylonia, and through the reestablishment of the nation, and then through Jesus Christ being born, and then dying, and then His Holy Spirit given to us, and the gospel throughout the world. Our faith is encouraged when we see all that has happened in history. And God cannot be uh, limited in a certain space. He, whatever He wants to do, He will do. God sometimes will use ways that we won't even think of. And ladies and gentlemen, everything that God does, He is responsible. He takes the responsibility for everything that happens, though evil or good that happens. Everything is through His plan. And secondly, God does not want us to fall because of those things.
things. And thirdly, God calls us to accept Him joyfully in that knowing that He is in control. He is sovereign. Do not stumble and fall, but keep strong your faith. This passage gives us a lot of uh, a lot of uh, lessons, but we will eventually study through them. First of all, we see that God is in action. He, in all things, God is at work. In Isaiah chapter 44, we, in Vietnamese, it has to be separated in different um, passages, in different uh, parts. But in um, the he Hebrews, it is one long uh, phrase that God does whatever He wants in this world. He wants everything. He can. He will do whatever He wants in the world that He has created. He will accomplish His will. In verse twenty-four, and that God is the only one that is in control. It's repeated many times in Isaiah. In Isaiah forty-four twenty-four, thus says the Lord, your Redeemer, who formed you from the womb. I am the Lord who made all things, who alone stretch out the heavens, who spread out the earth by myself. All this universe, the heavens, belong to God. Who frustrates the signs of liars and makes fools of diviners? Who turns wise men back and makes their knowledge foolish? Today, a lot of people claim that they are wise and knowledgeable, and they look in the past to things that has happened in the past, and they would say, "Oh, the future would be this way and this that way." But God, God is not limited in a frame. People will say, "Oh, in 2050, this will happen." How? How can they know? Only God knows. Only God sees the future clearly. The Creator, as the Creator, God has the freedom to stop humil uh, history. He can turn around history. He can uh, hasten history. According to His will, and He forms all events, all uh, things that happen in the history of mankind, according to His plan. And in the end, His kingdom will come. We see everything happening in Syria today, in Ukraine, in many places in this world. But all does not go past the control. And the sovereignty of God,、uh, God allows all that to accomplish His will, and praise the Lord for that. And He confirms the word of His servants and fulfills the counsel of His messengers, who says of Jerusalem, "She shall be inhabited." And the, of the cities of Judah, in verse twenty-seven, who says to the deep, "Be dry; I will dry up your rivers." God. Is the one in control, and he is the one true God and the unique God. It is repeated in Isaiah forty-five five a. Apart from me, there is no God, no other. In six b of chapter forty-five, aside from me, there is no other. I am Jehovah God. There is no other. Aside from, aside from God, there is no other. In verse eighteen c, I am Jehovah God. There is no other. Twenty two b, return to me and receive salvation. For I am God. There is no other. Twenty one b, aside from me, there is no other God. The only righteous God, and apart from Him, there is no other. Only God, and with His sovereignty, God has saved us. He created us. He created the universe, and He has. Caused the foolish, the wise, the wise to be foolish, and in contrast, he confirms the words of his servant, and he dries the deep rivers. What does it mean to dry up the deep rivers? That is, God has speaks of what He has done in the past. When God led the Israelites out of Egypt, and they faced a great sea. The Red Sea, and the Israelites were halted right there. It is called the Red Sea, 
and the the Egyptians, the Egyptian army was following them, and the Israelites were afraid and calling out. In the front of them was a great sea, in the back of them, a great army, and yet God sent、um, God had Moses raise up his staff, and the sea departed,、uh, opened up. And G and God has said, "Be dry. I will dry up your rivers." God has done that, and now God will do amazing things. In verse twenty-eight of forty-four, who says of Cyrus, "He is my shepherd, and he shall fulfill all my purpose." In the past, God used Moses to lead the Israelites out of Egypt. Moses was one who feared God, but now God did an amazing thing. He used Cyrus. Cyrus. God said, "He is my shepherd," and then God says, "He shall fulfill all my purpose." Saying of Jerusalem, "She shall be built, and of the temple, your foundations shall be laid." Now God used a person named Cyrus. God has the authority. God has the authority to control the whole world and to raise up Cyrus as He wants. God raised up Cyrus, who was a Gentile. But anointed by God, thus says the Lord to His anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have grasped to subdue nations before Him. Messiah or Christus, Christus is the one that's anointed. But this Cyrus, he was not the one who feared God. He. When he came、uh, to his、uh, authority in Media, he allowed those who were deported to Babylonia to go home. He allowed other people also to go back to their own nations, such as the Israelites went back to Jerusalem. He was not who, one who feared God, but here God says that He used that person. He anointed him. Whose right hand I have grasped to subdue nations before him, and to lose the belts of kings, to open doors before him that gates may not be closed. I will go before you and level the exalted places. I will break in pieces the doors of bronze and cut through the bars of iron. I will give you the treasures of darkness and the hoards in secret places, that you may know that it is I, the Lord, the God of Israel, who call you by your name. God did that. First of all, so that Cyrus would know Jehovah God. But it's a shame that Cyrus knew God, but did not worship God. A lot of people know today that there's a Creator, there's a God, but they do not want to worship Him. Sometimes they worship some God, but they want to worship other gods and idols. But only God. Is the only one true God. Apart from Him, there's no other. We cannot worship God and worship others. Only Jehovah God. And this man, he he's a very、uh, he wa he waves with the wind because he was a great uh, uh, politician. Whichever nation wants to do whatever, he will let allow and go with it. He wanted his nation to be at peace, so that everybody was subdued to him. But the question is, how is it that God calls a king、um, uh, outside of his his chosen people to be Messiah, to be Christ, Christ? Because that person has been prepared by God to accomplish the work that He has given. The meaning of this accomplishing God's God's will. Uh, this Cyrus, this man, was a foreshadow of Jesus Christ. You know what the word foreshadow means?、Um, for example, I'm walking this way, and the light is on this side, and my shadow goes to the front or to the side. Maybe the person sitting there does not see me, but see my sh shadow. It is not me, but knowing that that's my shadow, knowing that I am coming. Here, King Cyrus. He was a foreshadow of Christ. He is not Christ, but God has used him to bring the Israelites back to their nation. Why? Why is that? Because, because God says the Messiah will be born in Bethlehem of Judah, not in Babylonia. 
God has proclaimed that. So now He has accomplished His plan. He used Cyrus, a king who was a Gentile, not a Jew, to accomplish His plan, so that Jesus Christ will be born, and so that today we will be saved. So that Jesus will come and shed His blood and die for us because of God's plan for us and for all mankind. God says the glory will be of God will be revealed to all nations. Through Jesus Christ, and God has used Cyrus, an, a Gentile, but anointed by God, His shepherd. In verse four, for the sake of my servant Jacob and Israel, my chosen, I call you by your name. I name you, though you do not know me. This is the second reason, so that because of Jacob, because of Israel, my chosen. First of all, so that. Cyrus will know God, but secondly, because of his people, through this verse four, he did not know God, but God has chosen him by name. A, a century, more than a century before Cyrus was present on this earth, then God has called him by his name. He said, "Cyrus." The one I have chosen. Amazing, right? A hundred years plus before Cyrus, God was in control. Verse five: I am the Lord, and there is no other besides me. There is no god. I equip you, though you do not know me. Re pay attention to these these、uh, verbs. Who is the the noun of these verbs? The pronoun. It is God. Jehovah God, Cyrus, he went and conquered this nation at war with another nation, and subdued another. But what did God say? I did those things. He was just a vessel in the hands of God. God accomplished all that, and sometimes God uses evil to accomplish His His plan. Amazing, right? That God uses evil. Why? We we have a question. Why? Why God use allow the evil to happen? But sometimes God uses the evil to accomplish His His plan. And many people don't understand that, and so they will fall to those things. God used Herod to rebel against God. God used the Pharisees to nail Jesus to the cross. That is evil. But God used evil to accomplish. Salvation plan for us. Many times we do not see the big picture. We only see the little events in front of us. Why me? Why am I sick? Why do I have cancer? Why do I lose my job? Why these things happen? But we do not see the big picture, the meaning of our life that God has given to us. Why we live? How will the kingdom of God be? What? God's will will be. We do not know, but we only see the small, the small part. And sometimes God does not answer us in the small things, but God wants us to see the big picture. And when we see the big picture, the little things will not be a problem. God will be glorified through our illness and sickness. Sometimes God heals us so that we. So that God will be glorified through that healing, but sometimes God will not heal us, so that He will be glorified through not healing us. It all is His work. We do not、uh, limit Him in a frame and say God must must heal me so that I will glorify Him. No. Sometimes you know God did not heal Paul. His eyes could be very、uh, bad vision, and he had to write big letters. And he said, "Lord, heal me three times." Yet God said, "My grace is sufficient for you. My strength is made complete through your weakness." God wants to be glorified through the weakness of Paul. So do not sin before God. God is in control. He is sovereign. Let God be God, and don't be stumbled over it. But stand firm and keep the faith. And and obey him and submit to him. God has the authority to raise up Cyrus, and He has the authority to govern human affairs. He says in verse six of forty-five, the people.、Uh, he says, I'm sorry. He says, I am Jehovah God, and there is no other. First of all, that Cyrus will know him, and secondly, that the Israelites will know him, and third is that all people from west to east will know me, aside from aside from me. 
I form light and create darkness. I make well-being and create calamity. I am the Lord who does all these things. Chapter 45, verse 6 and 7. People say, oh, maybe um, Satan uh, made darkness. No. If God did not create darkness, then there was no darkness. But God created it. And God says that He created well-being and create calamity. Calamity also comes from God. God may do those things so that all will acknowledge that except from Him, there is no other. If God doesn't allow it, where does those things come from? Must come from God, right? But why? Why does God allow those things to happen? To, com to accomplish His plan for mankind. Do not stumble because of God, but keep the faith and submit to Him. All these things are things that God does. His victory. God used Cyrus to rescue His people and restore His uh, nation. And verse 7, I form light and create darkness. I make well-being and create calamity. I am the Lord who does all these things. There is a magazine, Life magazine, and the, uh, an, an interviewer came or I don't know what you call it, but he, he came to interview this girl who's two, uh, in second grade. And he asked, who is God? And the girl said, uh, God created weather. He gives us gifts as green grass and trees. But he gives me one thing that I don't like. That is war. And the girl continued. But sometimes God is good because he created Oh, hmm. But he created the machine that we can uh, pick up the toy. In one way, uh, Christine understood that God created those crea uh, the creation, but she did not understand how it is that he created the machine and that she spent $4 to get a toy from the machine but could not pick it up because she could not see the great picture. We also have to struggle with such. When God proclaims that He is like no other, that He created light and darkness and well-being and calamity, and that He does all these things, how is it that we can have the right understanding? How? By reading the whole Bible. Don't just read a part that you like, but to read the whole Bible. Instead of uh, blaming on God for all the evil, then trust in Him that He brings good out of evil and that we believe in Jesus Christ and His sacrifice on the cross. It is at Golgotha and at the cross that we see the justice and the holiness and love of God. Look at the cross and we will see the complete picture. It is there that evil is revealed, but it is also at the cross that righteousness and holiness and love of God is revealed. Praise the Lord. For we see God allows all those things to happen so that we can see that God is sovereign over all things. God is sovereign over all, but He is also one who is in control over all questions. Many people um, post lots of questions, but verse 9 of chapter 45, Woe to him who strives with him who formed him. A pot among earthen pots, does the clay say to him who forms it, What are you making? Or your work has no handles. Woe to him who says to a father, What are you begetting? Or to a woman, With what are you in labor? Thus says the Lord, the Holy One of Israel, and the one who formed him, ask me of things to come. Will you command me concerning my children and the work of my hands? It's like a, a pot that says to the, the crafter, uh, the potter, uh, why are you forming this? Why does this pot has a handle and the other doesn't? Uh, that's not the authority of the pot. It is up to the potter. We are in the hands of God, however He forms us. The Israelites 
um, complained to God and say, "Why, God, you use Cyrus? You raise him up as one who is doesn't not fear you. And if he allows it, then we go back to uh, Jerusalem. Uh, we have to rely on him. He gives us things for us to build the temple. But God says, "I have the right. I have the authority. I am God. I will accomplish my will." And they say, "Why is it that people, the Israelites?" God, uh, you know, there are some pretty good people amongst the Israelites. Why God does not raise them? But no, God accomplishes His will according to His plan. Is He? He gives us the two pictures of the pot and the potter, and the children asking the parents. It's like mankind who asks the Creator. Mankind has no right to question. The work of the Creator and the One who is sovereign. God is sovereign, and no one can question Him. And there is no use to resist the authority of God. He says, "I made the earth and created man on it. It was My hands that stretched out the heavens, and I commanded all their hosts. I have stirred him up in righteousness, and I will make all his ways level." <clears throat> He shall build My city and set My exiles free. Not for price or reward, says the Lord of hosts. God says, "As I have created the heavens according to my will, now I will raise up Cyrus according to my will. Whether you resist or not, it's useless. There's no use to resist." The problem here is that we need. To be careful, do we limit God according to our understanding? Many times, we do not see God's hands working in the events of history in this world, and we think that this has to happen in this way, this way. But God has His ways, not according to our understanding, for He is one who is sovereign and in control. Sometimes we pray as if we are saying, "Lord."、Uh, This is how it is. This is how it is. Do it this way, Lord, and we plan it out for God. No, we pray and we ask God's will be done upon our life, not according to my will, Lord, but according to yours. God can use a person who we can't even imagine. He might even use a person who has no abilities, no spiritual gifts. Maybe lacking education, but God can use that person to do great things for Him. Person who we think that are not important, God can use. We have seen that in history. God, look, you know, people、uh, look at Jesus as a block. I mean, as a, a, a stone that has been thrown out, but He became the cornerstone. God. God has the authority, for He is the one that is sovereign. Moses saw that he could not really speak; he couldn't speak well, and he would stutter, and he could not lead his people. And then God asked, "Who made your mouth?" We see that God. Is sovereign. He has created all things, and he does all things according to his will. God can use people, though he doesn't、um, submit. We see Cyrus that he、uh, he he worked according to God's will, but he had no God relationship to God, no fellowship with God. We are in the church. God can use you. God can use you to bring others to Him. God can use you to teach His word to others. But be careful so that you don't lose out on salvation, such as Cyrus. That is, God used you, but you do not have fellowship with God. You do not worship Him. God calls us to become、um, holy priests before Him. He does not call us to conquer the world, but to worship Him, and so we offer our lives to worship God, to proclaim the utmost high of God, and to proclaim His salvation to people. Sometimes we look at people's lives and see that they are not worthy, but God used them. 
because He is in control. God can use a very uh, fearful child that does not dare stand before people to say anything, yet God uses that person. And we see the result, the result of the sovereignty of God is in salvation. God does everything to bring about salvation. Worshipping idols, the end of idolatry is nothing. In chapter 45, verse 14, Thus says the Lord, The wealth of Egypt and the merchandise of Cush and the Sabians, men of stature, shall come over to you and be yours. They shall follow you. They shall come over in chains and bow down to you. They will plead with you, saying, Surely God is in you, and there is no other, no gods besides him. We see that God is answering to the way p the Israelites were complaining to God about how he used Cyrus. And God says, hold on, hold on. I will allow Cyrus to allow you to go back to Jerusalem to rebuild my my city. Why? Because from there, there will be one who is raised up from from Jerusalem. And outside from him, there is no other. Egypt and all those other nations will belong to you and they will bow down before you. They will come over in chains and bow down before you. In there, there is us, the Vietnamese, and all people that come to God and say, Surely God is in you who is referring to Jesus. And aside from him, there's no other. Truly, you are a God who hides himself, O God of Israel, the Savior. God does amazing things. He does things that is in, in hiding, in secret. And He is doing His work through His church. God um, illustrates His church as, as a rising flower. You know, at night, they just put rising flower into the, the flower, uh, the rising agent into the flower. In the morning, the flower raises, uh, becomes bigger. And people say, oh, allow this church to allow control over all the world because this church is great. It's got so many power and talents and let the church to be in control. And then they say, no, the church is, has no power, no strength. And they would laugh at the church. But what? God does things in, in hiding. And he uses his church to grow throughout the whole world. And one day, his nation will be revealed, and all men and all people and all nations will kneel before God. We see that we are small and weak, but God will use the small and weak to do things in hiding. The God of Israel is the true God. Truly, you are a God who hides himself. He hides himself in us very common, normal people. But he will accomplish his work through his church. The church is the greatest hope for this world. God has redeemed us by, his, uh, by a great price. All of them are put to shame and confounded. To the makers of idols go in shame. But Israel is saved by the Lord with everlasting salvation. You should not be put to shame or confounded to all eternity. The Israelites feel that they are so shameful. But God said, no, you will be saved. God saves. And secondly, He will rescue the nations. God does not bring salvation only to the Israelites, but through the Israelites to all nations. God, who is one, who's the great judge. He created this earth, and he established it, formed it, and maintains it. For thus is the Lord who created the heavens, who formed the earth and made it to be established. It. He did not, oh, verse 19, he, I did not speak in secret in a land of darkness. I did not say to the offspring of Jacob, seek me in vain. I, the Lord, speak the truth. I declare what is right. 
Assemble yourselves and come, draw near together, you survivors of the nations. They have no knowledge who carry about their wooden idols and keep on praying to a God that cannot save. Declare and present your case. Let them take counsel together. Who told this long ago? Who declared of it old? Was it not I, the Lord? Apart from me, there is no other God. The righteous God, the Savior, except for me, there is no other God. God reveals Himself through the revelation of nature and of man's conscience. And He also reveals Himself through His Word and through His one and only Son, Jesus Christ, who is the Word made flesh, the Word written and the Word in flesh. And He says, apart from Him, there is no other God. All nations will come to worship God, His salvation comes to Israel and through Israel goes to all nations. And now there is a, an invitation from God. In chapter 5, 45, verse 22, Turn to me and be saved, all the ends of the earth, for I am God and there is no other. Turn to me and be saved. By myself I have sworn, from my mouth has gone out in righteousness a word that shall not return. To me every knee shall bow, every tongue shall swear allegiance. Only in the Lord it shall be said of me our righteousness and strength. To him shall come and be ashamed all who were incensed against him. In the Lord all the offspring of Israel shall be justified and shall glory. God saves the Israelites from their shame and gave them glory. Now there is only two ways for you to choose. Before the sovereignty of God that is, to trust or to rebel. Sooner or later, we have to face God and submit to Him, for all will have to submit to Him. By myself I have sworn, from my mouth has gone out in righteousness a word that shall not return. To me every knee shall bow, every tongue shall swear allegiance. Though you submit to Him or not, whether you respond and accept Him or not, Sooner or later, we have to bow down before Him. But if you rebel against Him, you will submit to Him, bow down before Him in shame. Those who do not follow His will and submit to His will will submit to Him in shame. But whoever trusts in the Lord will submit to Him with joy and eternal glory. Praise the Lord that all of Israelites, offspring of Israel, will be justified and shall be glorified. God is sovereign. There are many things we do not understand, but let God be God. Do not be stumbled by those things, but totally trust in the Lord and submit to Him. Stand firm in your faith and submit to the Lord. Let us come to the Lord in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we just need to trust in you. You are worthy of our reverence and fear. And you have said, that do not be afraid of the one who can kill your flesh, but fear the one who can kill your flesh and place your soul in eternal hell. Praise you, Lord, that when we come to you in faith, you take away all our fear and give us a heart to worship you and to fear you that is righteous before you as a child to a father. Thank you, Lord. For we know that all things that happen in this world, all the events in our lives, in our families, it is through your loving and powerful almighty hands. We know that all things work together for good to them that love him. Thank you, Lord. Please 
help us in our faith, Lord. And at this time, Father, there are those sitting in the church right now who are facing difficulties, who are facing troubled times. Father, please encourage our brothers and sisters so that we would trust in you. And Lord, we see that your work is very difficult. We cannot accomplish it. We cannot proclaim your good news and salvation to all nations and make disciples of all mankind. But that is not difficult for you, Lord. And you can use your church. You will use our lives, our simple lives, Lord, to accomplish your great work. Father, help us to have faith in you, to trust that though we are very small and weak, though we are foolish, though we are lacking power and strength, but you are rich and wise and all-powerful, that and you can do great and mighty things through our lives. Father, we lift up our lives to you, Lord. Please use us according to your will. Help us to submit before you, Lord, for sooner or later we will have to bow before your throne. Help us to submit to you right today, Lord, to be 